Thanks for watching Workspace Real Estate. My name is James Robertson. And for today, we're gonna to do another day in the life type deal. So we're on a 1960 market. Today's trip is gonna be a typical day for me on 1960. I'm gonna be dropping off uh, a package that I need to send somewhere at the UPS store on 1960 and 45. And then I'm going to bring something back to Best Buy. I'm gonna bring back a little monitor I got from Best Buy, just a little monitor. Throughout that process, we're gonna stop at places along 1960 that are relevant. We wanna show the history. We wanna show what happened here. We wanna show opportunities in this market. And most importantly, we wanna be real about 1960 because let's face it, when you say 1960, everyone has an opinion, some good, some bad. I get to be totally unbiased and talk about what I buy here, what I lease here, what I recommend clients here, and that's what we're gonna to deliver today. So a lot of you guys may not know, but this is one of the most heavily trafficked streets in the whole country. When I say heavy traffic, I'm talking about 40,000 cars a day, uh, at least. In order to compare 1960 to other streets, you have to start comparing 1960 to freeway systems. <laughs> so we have more cars that go on this street than most major freeways across the country. Before I drop off my packages, I wanna make sure that you guys take a look at this market. So as we keep walking here, you're gonna see the Workforce Solutions, and what you'll also see is Florida Career College. This used to be like a Kroger's or an HEB type store. We call it a big box in retail. I wanna show you why a Florida Career College would find a place like this attractive. And the answer to that is quite simple. Florida Career College and educational institutions like this find these spaces attractive because they have huge parking. You can hold your classes and most importantly, the rents are relatively cheap. And by cheap, I'm talking about rental rates that are probably half or maybe a third of what the original big boxes here were actually paying. So if you look at some of the other tenants in this area, you'll see a nail salon, luxury hair, Boost Mobile. Now this is one of the more premier retail spaces on this part of 1960. It kind of declines as we go down and then it shoots up again. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But I got some packages to take back. So I'm gonna go back to my car, drop off the package so we can get moving. So one of the great things about this market is the diversity of businesses here. I mean, 1960 is one of the only places I know of in all of Houston that you can actually have two super Walmarts within a few miles of each other. That's how dense this area is. I'm talking tons and tons of rooftops. So from a retail perspective, you've got a lot of varying businesses that work well together here. If you live in this area, you're able to drop off a package, you're able to go shopping or take advantage of the tons of restaurants here that are all unique and all have different flavors and styles. Okay, don't ask what's in this box. <laughs> I think that the market has changed, but it's adapting to the demographic. Does that mean that it's going down? It doesn't. It means that it's conforming to what's actually in the marketplace. And I think the businesses that can be successful here are here. The businesses that have to chase higher income per capita have moved to where those rooftops actually are. You got a Ross, you got a Five Below, you got a DD's Discount, you got a Kroger, you got a Goodwill, Chinese Buffet, Afalas, Dirt Cheap, and Planet Fitness. When you start seeing liquor stores that pop up in places like this, it changes the retail landscape. I'm really surprised that Chick-fil-A, usually in their leases, they have clauses where they don't allow liquor stores to be that close. I don't know how they pulled it off. I'm not a fan of the liquor store here. I think that detracts from everything else, unless you have an upscale type liquor store. Um, that kind of helps, but that's not one of them. So I want to swing around so you can see this 1960 family practice. Right here, we're at a, I call it a, a medical center enclave on this part of 1960. A lot of pharmacists want to come in and move into this area to take advantage of all of the specialties that go on here. Doctor and physical therapy specialists that frequent this market. They've been here a very, very long time. Further down, you can see it where I'm pointing. That's the Northwest Medical Center directly behind me. We see a lot of ER centers popping up. And here's another example, you got a community ER. This has been very popular in the 1960 market. More importantly, it's been popular throughout the city of Houston. So right now we're at a new section of 1960, and this is the La Michiona meat market. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. They're always centered 
in the densest areas in the marketplace where the Hispanic population is at. This just shows you how diverse the 1960 market is. Right next to this meat market, there's an African church in the same strip center. Now, when we look at this part of the market, now we're on 1960 in Kirkendall. To me, you would think this would be one of the stronger intersections in this part of the market, this side of 1960. This used to be another big box retail center. As you can see, not a lot of stuff here now. Almost looks like a wasteland. And you may want to ask why that is. This is not a sign of the demographics being horrible as much as it is a sign of bad decisions by investors. This guy got this place at a steal. When you start being able to buy property so cheap that it's a steal, I've had several deals I've done personally in this marketplace where the sales price of an office building or a retail spot was so low that we had amateur investors that had no business buying commercial properties. They get a property like this. They get impatient. They don't know how to lease it correctly. So what do they do? They turn it into a storage facility. There's a reason this place is not successful. It should be. But um, to take a place like this and turn it into storage, I think was a huge mistake. And beyond that, there was a fire that happened here not too long ago. I'm pretty sure he was hoping this whole thing burned down so he can get the insurance money for that property. He probably defaulted, but that would be my guess. I hope the next buyer for this property takes a look at the surrounding market and says, look, we can make this into something great. So let's go see what else is further down 1960. I know I just showed you an example that was a failure. Bad investments like that and bad deals detract from the entire neighborhood. They become havens for crime. They decrease the property values for the residential homeowners and the other commercial property people in the whole area. I want to show you an example of development done right here on 1960. So you got a Suns Club here behind me, Metro PCS, you got a Golden Bank, you got a Pro Stylist, a Hunan Cafe, a Yummy Store, you got the Face Shop. These are all mid to upscale local boutique shops. They're strong and successful individual businesses. Very few franchises, but some. You got medical in here. You got Cypher Pediatrics. I love this type of development. It speaks to the community. It speaks to the diversity that's in this demographic. The food here is great. It's almost like you get to travel and taste the different cultures. That's one thing that's great about 1960. It's great about the market. But this was a development that was done right. Now, it took a while to get here. This spot was vacant for years. It took a smart investor here with enough capital to really take advantage of what you see here. And they changed the facade, because it was grayish before. They changed the facade, they fixed the roof, they had the capital to do the build out the right way. And because of that, they attracted the right type of tenants. I think so many investors in this market, they buy cheap, they don't have the cash to renovate it properly. So what ends up happening is, the tenants don't have enough capital to do the build out on their own. The landlord is pretty stingy with the cash. So you get a bunch of thrown together developments that look cheap, the tenants don't survive long because the customers don't show up. This place feels safer. Coincidentally, it's right across the street from a Walmart there. This was a really smart play. They took advantage of what was already existing. They bought it, I just happen to know they bought it at a tremendous price. They bought it well below market. So I think it was a good win all the way around. I love investors like this because it adds to the value of this market. So when people say, oh, this place is going down or this place is ghetto, just keep in mind, it's not the people, it's not the people. It's how investors and developers create functional and working structures for the community to take advantage of. This is an example of development done right. It's an example of the wonders of capitalism that people that want to grow and take advantage of a consumer base, they find good opportunities. I think people at least here got to take advantage of below market rents. They got to take advantage of tremendous traffic. They got to take advantage of a safe, functional area. And I think this was just a huge win all the way around. So I'm glad we have a good story on this part of town. Let's keep moving down. So, so now we're at my destination where I got to drop something off at Best Buy. When I used to work in retail, I could tell you that the Woolabook Center was one of the doors in retail, we call it doors, that was the highest producing because it had a really strong income per capita, a lot of density, and a lot of traffic. 
I mean, you had Memorial City Mall, you had the Galleria, which was maybe second, and Willowbrook Mall used to be third on just what was hot as far as who's moving the most product. In those development cycles, you're gonna have periods that are new, where things grow up. You're gonna have periods where things mature, which is where we're at now. And then you're gonna have periods in every major commercial market where things decline. This is a very mature market. Now there's some parts of 1960 that are managed really well. There are other parts of 1960 that are flat out scary. But it doesn't mean that we abandon the community. It just means that investors that have the community in mind, that wanna make great developments to cater to the people, that they spend time and grow those developments. It means that investors that don't wanna take that risk, that want safer bets, so to speak, they invest more on this side. Now you're gonna pay more, but if you're creative enough, you can make your money on that side and do tremendously well. There's lots of business owners, I see them every day, and they do very, very well in this market. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and I told you guys I had a small little box, just a small monitor, nothing major, just a small monitor. So I'm gonna go bring this back and I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good one.